Hey, hi Kevin. Hi. Um, nice to meet you and to, to, to talk to you nice right you. now. Um, Saturday is your match uh, with uh, Steve Austin. Yeah. Would you also say that he had the biggest impact on your career or would it be somebody else? Oh yeah, no. Um, you know, he was my favorite wrestler for the longest time. Uh, I always say Shawn Michaels is one of my favorites as well. Shawn Michaels is the reason I became a wrestler. Uh, I saw one of his matches when I was 11 years old and blew me away. But not long after that, the ringmaster uh, made his debut in WWE, and obviously a ringmaster got some King Stone Cold Steve Austin. I was a fan of his from that moment on, and uh, I've said this before, you know, it's, it sounds cliche to say I was the biggest Stone Cold fan, but man, anybody who says they were a bigger Stone Cold fan than me, I'd be willing to fight for it because, uh, yeah, and you know, as far as influence in my career, I do the I do the man's uh, you know finishing move nowadays. So obviously he's had a huge impact on my career. But even beyond that, you know, I met him in 2005 at an airport just randomly. And I was just an independent wrestler trying to get here to WWE. I asked him the best advice I could. He he told me just never stop running your mouth. And it's funny because I put that in practice immediately, and that's exactly what happened, and that's exactly what led us to us to this moment on Saturday. So uh, all around huge impact on my career, no doubt. Uh, did you talk less before you talked to him? I mean, in terms of promo? Oh, uh, before he gave me the advice, you mean? Yes. No, not necessarily. Well, yes, I did. I, but I already knew that being vocal in the ring was something that I was good at, so I would try to do it. But once he, like, once you ask Uncle Steve Austin what the one piece of advice he can give you is, and that's the answer he gives you, Obviously, I went into overdrive from that point on and started just talking as much as I humanly could in my matches, and that became a big part of, of, of my uh, my appeal to fans, I think, over the years. So, uh, yeah, it was definitely a good piece of advice. And in the last years since you came to WWE, did you sometimes talk to him if there is a possibility of a uh, match? Or? No, I never talked to him about that, but he was always an open... Uh, was always open to discuss the business, the industry, any of the advice I needed. Uh, so that was great to have that access to him. Uh, not something I took for granted, right? Uh, but yeah, we never discussed any, anything like this. No. But you talked to him before using the stunner? So yes, I asked him for his permission because yeah. I wouldn't have felt right doing it without his blessing. And he was happy, he was very happy to give me his blessings. He was actually, he wondered why nobody had come to him before. Uh, okay. and asked them that, so I, I was Maybe just, that, they I was, had too much respect or...? Yeah, well, so to me, that, that's the thing, that's why I went up to him, is I had too much respect to do it without his blessing, so it worked out. Okay, um, when you fight him tomorrow, and you will beat him, do you want to do it with a stunner or maybe... I mean, uh, look, or? if it comes down to a fight, of course I want to hit him with a stunner, because how... What better way to cement my name in a WrestleMania legacy and a WrestleMania moment that'll be talked about for years than hitting Stone Cold Steve Austin with Stunner in the middle of WrestleMania, uh, in the middle of the ring at WrestleMania? You know, that's it's got to happen. It's got to happen. And you, um, I, I read an interview some time ago that uh, you learned English from just watching WWE. Yep. I mean, I learned it in school, but also watching Raw and SmackDown live in English. Yeah. Not in, instead of German, uh, had helped me as well. Yep. Um, what do you think, how long it took, took this to, to lose your accent, if you have one? Yeah, and well, so some people will still say that I have one, you know, like I have friends. It's funny because actually friends from Canada who speak English and know, kind of know the, 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 the French-Canadian accent will tell me they can still hear my accent my French Canadian accent but I think it's because they're closer to that accent right but Americans will tell me mostly that they they don't hear an accent I would say it took me a, a long time like a good and, and it was just a matter of like being in the United States very often talking to Americans all the time eventually it just kind of washed away but it's not something I did consciously it just came with time you know but so yeah just like you I, I, I learned English watching uh, I would like to say school but back home school as far as English goes was pretty inept so they it really didn't help much it was really all watching TV and watching raw and, and Jim Ross's commentary really that, that let me hear you yeah, to, to speak in English this way so the last question um, we are now here in Texas in Dallas 
Is it really so bad here? Or I mean, I've so been so staying bad. in the hotel. I'm trying not to go out. So it's so far so good. Yeah. Okay. I try to avoid it. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You. Right, and you uh, maybe you can talk, uh, take a short picture as well.